POP inhibitor Olaparib has recently gained approval for the use in uh, BRCA mutant ovarian cancer patients both in the US and in Europe. Uh, however, the, all, not all patients with uh, uh, BRCA mutant ovarian cancer patient, they do respond to PARP inhibitor Olaparib. And even if they respond to PARP inhibitor, uh, the duration of response is quite variable between different patients. So we wanted to know if there is any other factors uh, at the baseline which may predict response to PARP inhibitor uh, other than BRCA1 or BRCA2 deficiency. Uh, so we collaborated with uh, seven other uh, institutions internationally and collected 108 uh, BRCA mutant ovarian cancer patient and uh, retrospectively looked at the baseline characteristics of this patient to see if we can identify any baseline characteristics which may predict response to a lab. We found that patient who uh, had a longer interval between the last platinum agents and the start of the uh, PARP inhibitor uh, that we called it platinum to PARP interval or PTPI, the uh, response rate uh, in those patients they are much better. Uh, so the duration of uh, last platinum to the start of the PARP inhibitor seems to be one of the factors that predict response to PARP inhibitor. Additionally, uh, patients who uh, have less lines of treatment uh, seem to have higher likelihood of responding to Olaparib uh, compared with those patients who are more advanced and receive PARP inhibitor at the end of the uh, lines of treatment. Uh, of course, the uh, license at the moment is uh, for patients who have recurrent uh, breast cancer. Uh, in the US it's more than three lines of treatment. Uh, however, in future, uh, in, uh, further research is needed to identify whether uh, bringing PARP inhibitor at the beginning of the treatment uh, is going to actually be more beneficial.